it's Bree. Um, I hope you're having a great reading week. This week's booktube SFF Babbles topic is where to start with science fiction. Um, I love science fiction. I read a lot of science fiction. Um, and I have a couple of things picked out. Uh, some of them are fairly, I'm, I'm anticipating going to be fairly popular suggestions. Um, some of them less so. Uh, definitely there are multiple authors here who I think are really big and are probably going to be tossed at you. Um, the first thing that I have is for those of you who want to sh start but are maybe thinking you want to go short stories first. Um, and for that, I'm suggesting Ken Liu's The Paper Menagerie. Um, a lot of this is more on the fantasy side, but there are some science fiction stories in here that I think are really, really well done. Um, and Ken Liu has a way of writing that I think is spectacular. Um, it's just detailed and elegant and thoughtful. Um, so, I mean, just in general, like this is a, a short story collection you should pick up, but um, there are some fantastic SF short stories in there. Uh, the second thing I have, I wanted to do The Left Hand of Darkness. Um, I, part of it, why I don't have it here is because I took, I took it out from the library. I don't actually own a copy. Um, and the other one is I wanted to suggest maybe a shorter work. So this is a little bit more like novella length, and that's the word for World is Forest. Uh, this is a, a science fiction setting, but Le Guin's writing is so much about human nature and just the heart of how we treat one another, um, race and the ins and out of otherness. Um, just so very, very well done. And this one is, it's set up with just some really poignant moments. Um, on top of being just like a real fantastic cornerstone of science fiction. Um, Le Guin is really good if you want to get into a more feminist kind of science fiction, something that's going to be engaging of more broad social topics as opposed to the hard sciences. Um, most of these books actually I think are really good for people who are not, who don't want to jump straight into hard SF. I can do a different recommendations for hard science fiction books later, but these are all really good for people who don't want to jump right into the deep end. Um, <laughs> I have The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein. Um, Heinlein is absolutely, I would say, one of the easily one of the classics of SF. Um, his stuff is interesting and engaging, um, very libertarian oriented. He's one of those kind of classic uh, science fiction as a tool to talk about politics kind of guy. Um, and he does so in an engaging and fast paced way. All of his stuff is really, really, it's engaging. It's interesting to read. It's, um, got some interesting characters and, you know, crazy plot elements. It's, it's good stuff. Um, so I would suggest the moon is a harsh mistress. I would actually suggest if somebody tells you Starship Troopers that you read this first. I think it's a better preface for his writing overall. Um, but Heinlein, regardless, you should be reading. Um, I have two uh, newish releases that I, I think are really worth reading. Um, Luna New Moon is kind of like the godfather in space. Um, it's a, a multi-generational family drama. Um, it is really good at integrating the kind of hard SF elements that you might be scared of as a beginner. So things like vacuum and, and um, you know, gravity, um, gravity changes for people who'd be off planet and um, closed environment and, and things like that, 3D printing, uh, mineral mining on the moon, all sorts of good stuff like that. But it does so in a way that is very subtly like integrated into the story. Um, it's all very well explained, and the story itself is phenomenal. I really, really like the family aspect of the the story. Um, it's very much one that goes after the kind of human elements of what it would be like to be in space as opposed to, again, a, that more hard sci-fi. Um, and it is drama-packed. Just, if you... If you like yourself some action and adventure and you like mob stories or if you like um, stories about like crazy political maneuverings and corporate manipulation, like this is a this is a fantastic story to start for. Um, and then the last one I have is I would say almost it borders for me between 
an actual novel and almost more of a consistent world short story collection. Um, and that is the, lo the Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Um, my suggestion is actually to go and watch the Joss Whedon show Firefly first and then watch this or read this. Um, but this is a fantastic story about a crew of, uh, basically they're like tunnel jumpers. They, they make tunnels in space so that you can travel from one point in space to another in a, a significantly reduced time. Um, but it's very much about the relationships, the way that they are interacting with one another, the influences in their lives that kind of cause them to become the people who they are. It's very good. Um, I, again, I would say it, it borders between novel and kind of an episodic short story collection. Um, it's, it's episodic in a way that a novel normally isn't, um, but very well worth the read. Very interesting, very like it, heart wrenching, like tug your heartstrings kind of stuff. Um, Ch Becky Chambers is actually up for the uh, Campbell Award this year, or she should be. She's eligible for the John Campbell Award. Um, so there you have it. These are the, the recommendations that I have for you. Let's see if I can give you a good shot. There you go. Those are my five recommendations of, for places to start in science fiction. Again, these are all very much oriented towards not hard sci-fi. There are a bunch of places that I would love to tell you to start in hard sci-fi, but I think that it's a little jumping into the waters. If you want to do that, I'll do a video for it, but these are fantastic places to start and well worth the read. I hope you're having a fantastic reading week and I will talk to you later. Bye.